that's Jeremiah, Isaiah. Oh, here we go. See you now, moments. Isaiah 7. The prophets all mixed up. Major prophets, minor prophets. Isaiah was a major prophet prophesying in Babylon. Okay, uh, Isaiah 7. Then. I'm going to read from verse 3. Then the Lord said to Isaiah, Go out now and meet Ahaz, and uh, you and your shear. Your shear shop, your son, at the end of the aqueduct from the upper pool on the highway to the fuller's field. And say to him, take heed and be quiet. Do not fear or be faint hearted for those two stubs of smoking firebrands for the fierce anger of Rezin and Syria and the son of Ramallah. Because of Syria, Ephraim, the son of Ramallah, have plotted evil against you saying, let us go up against Judah and trouble it, and let us make a gap in its wall for ourselves, and set a king over them, the son of Tabal. Thus says the Lord God, it shall not stand, nor shall it come to pass. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is Rezin. Within 65 years, Ephraim will be broken, so that it shall not be a people. The head of Ephraim is Samaria. And the head of Samaria is Ramallah's son. If you will not believe, surely you will not be established. Moreover, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign for yourself from the Lord your God. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, nor will I test the Lord. Then he said, Hear now, O house of David, is it a small thing that you weary men, but will you weary God also, my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, God with us. Whoa, what a prophecy. What an amazing thing. Um, Isaiah, a major prophet, gets the word of the Lord, and the word of the Lord comes to him and he says, Go and meet Ahaz at the pool, at a certain place. Isn't it great that God's word comes to us? He meets us where we are. He tells us where, wherever you're at, God's word can come to you. And here we've got the word of the Lord coming through Isaiah to this evil king. Listen, he was an evil king, a bad one. And the line of David, but he was a bad one. And um, the message comes to him in a very difficult time. War was upon Judah and upon Ahaz. The people were very frightened. It says earlier on that they were shaking like trees as this army came. It was Israel and it was Syria coming to breach the wall, set a king over them and to destroy them. So this word comes to him. Ahaz became king at the age of 20. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight. He turned to idols. He sacrificed his own sons as burnt offerings. And he turned away from David's faith. So he went alone. As a result, Judah was suffering. When we turn from God, we will never be blessed. When we get out of his promises and away from him, we think we can do it ourselves and follow the world. It is nothing but trouble. And here the word of the Lord comes to him and warns him. But I'm glad that the first part of it, as Isaiah speaks to him in verse 4, says this. Listen, be quiet, fear not, neither be faint-hearted. Isn't that an amazing word? <laughs> Isn't that through scripture? Don't be afraid. You know, when Israel was facing the Red Sea and the, the old enemy was behind them coming to him, God says, be still and know that I'm God. Very often in our circumstances of turmoil, God can bring a word to you through his word. Be still, be quiet, I've got this. I've got you. You know, that's a word. But then Isaiah goes further on and says there's something very important. He says, it will not take place, it will not happen. But this army's there, and it's all going off, and as all we can see is the enemy. As often God's word comes against what's going on up here and what we can see. God works in the miraculous. And God knows what he's doing, and God says to him, Something else that's important, and I think you need and I need to take hold of it. He challenges him. Now, God's word will challenge you. 
and God will challenge you exactly where you're at. It says this, it says this, it says, if you will not believe, surely you will not be established. Okay? That word if is conditional. It's something that we do. It's something that we act on. It's a volition. It's an act of our will. I will believe. Though I don't see it, though I don't understand it, I will believe what God is telling me. That is what's important. And God is dealing with a man who's completely mixed up. He's lost his faith. He's looking to idols. He's sacrificing his sons. And yet God is challenging him. God is bringing his word to him and trying to get him into faith. If you will not believe, you will not be established. Isn't it an amazing thing that faith establishes us? Your faith will ground you and connect you and strengthen you. What a lot of trouble he was going through. Trouble encourages faith. Trouble strengthens faith. And sometimes the greatest parts of our faith is when we've been through the greatest difficulties. It establishes us. It firms us on the rock of God's word, on Christ. Faith. If you do not believe, you will not be established. In fact, another version says, I cannot establish you. So, this word belief. If there's no belief, you will find no relief. Or, if you will not be sure, you will not be secure. Okay? How many of us lack assurance? Now, this is a problem in the church. It's a problem at Bible colleges. It's, I've been there. And we used to sing this old hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. We used to slip in the word and say, Blessed Assurance, wish it was mine. <laughs> oh, what a foretaste. <laughs> Why were we slipping in those words? Because we were condemned. Because of habitual, well, not habitual sin, I take that back. Because of sins that occur now and then in our lives. Young men finding this problem in college. Wish it was mine. Oh. Let us believe God. Let us be established. Let us have the assurance that God loves us, that he's for us, that Christ's blood cleanses us from all sin. And that we can come to him with our sins and find his assurance. Your faith has made you whole. There's an important truth. If we don't stand in faith, then we are susceptible to anything. You can be manipulated into anything because you're not established. You need to be established. That is our part within this, is to believe. It's not impossible. It's not a difficulty. Belief comes from your will. I am choosing to believe what God says. But my emotion is telling me I have failed. The situation before me is threatening me too much. And I can't see. I'm flapping. Our part is to put that aside and say, I am standing on what God says. God has got this. He says to him, it will not happen and Ahaz has a choice to make. Now, will he carry on in his unbelief? Will he carry on in his pagan worship? Will he continue to kill his children, hoping to find the favor of Baal? Or will he say, I will trust the living God, who says to me through an oracle, Baal didn't speak to him. Pagan idols don't speak. They're dead pieces of wood. But here we've got the living God speaking through Isaiah, the major prophet, and saying, I've got this. Don't worry. Just be still. And he is confronted with a challenge to believe. Are you confronted this morning with a challenge to trust God? Are you challenged to stand in faith? Now, circumstances in our lives often arise that give birth to fear in our hearts. God's promises, his living word, active word that cuts and gets into us and speaks to us, his word is there to counteract doubt. It's there to remind us that his constant companionship is with us. Especially his watchful eye over his sheep. 
And in particular, when we're going through a storm, he's there. He's got it. Didn't Jesus come to them in the middle of the storm and say, don't worry, it is I. I am here. And so Jesus has got it. The trial, the adverse circumstances, God's promises, his living word, we can stand on and believe. The boat could never sink with those disciples in. Why? Because the future church was within those few disciples in that boat. It was just a test. It was just a trial. It was to show Jesus in his glory and for them to see something about him that they couldn't see through normal circumstances. They had to see that he was the Lord over the storm. Well, they had to go through the situation to find him coming to them in the storm. And then when he got into the boat, they were across the other side, back to mission. There was something they had to learn about him. And possibly there's something that you have got to learn in your situation, through your fear, through your doubts, through your situation. You've got to believe what God says. Okay. Ahaz had this choice. And um, <clears throat> truths, sorry, uh, truths that are calculated to counter fear. This is God's truth. is calculated to counter your fear. And to cause us to stand firm, that is, in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Stand firm in the grace of Christ. But we must choose to believe. Aya has refused. Isn't it sad that he refused? And to his great loss, he was only king for 16 years. And all the good kings lasted a lot longer. When you do what God wants, you find his blessing is there. When we don't, we won't last long. He didn't last at all. Two Chronicles, Chronicles, two Chronicles, two twenty twenty. Wonderful story about Jehoshaphat. Me and Scott used to talk about this. Facing a massive army, uh, they were at odds, standing against a huge, huge army. Even the camels, they couldn't count them. And then the prophetic word came to Jehoshaphat and his fear and trembling. And his prayer, he prayed, he says, Lord, this army is before us. We can do nothing but our eyes are upon you. And then one of the prophets was moved by the Spirit and rose up and he said, Men of Judah and Jehoshaphat, put your trust in the Lord, your God, and you will be established. That word there again, established. Strengthened and strong in faith. They had to believe. So what did they do? Did they say, oh no, 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 this is too great. We can't, we can't just take a word from a prophet. We can't just take these words and walk by. They believed. And they started to praise Praise started to rise up in the heart, and they praised God with loud voices, he said. The word of God brings encouragement. The word of the Lord came to this wicked king to encourage him, to challenge him, and to lift his faith. So when God brings a word to you in a situation, it's to encourage you. Okay? For me, I was in a job this week. The trial was me over, over, over a price. Uh, I gave a price way back in January. The things had quadrupled and the job was carrying on. And I said, the slabs have doubled in price. And uh, I was so worried about asking for extra money. I was, it was terrifying. I had to pray about it. And I, I, I just dropped the hint. And I thought, oh, this isn't going down well. And then the radio was on, listening to Premier Praise. And they just dropped a scripture in and says, <laughs> will go before you and fight for you. I thought, wow, the Lord is speaking to me. My faith lifted because I've got a word from the Lord. Later that afternoon, or was the next day, they came to me and said, yeah, we'll pay the difference. We've been thinking about it, you're right. Oh boy, when God speaks to you, believe. Because, you know, the situation seemed harsh and difficult, but God has got it in hand. When he speaks to you, Listen to him and believe. And so, Hebrews 11.6 says this. Without faith, it is what? Impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Now we can split this up. And they're actually hinge words. They call them hinge words. They're terms of ex. Explanation or expanding their words that cause us to ponder and to pause and to think. So it says this without faith, it's impossible to please him. So without faith, you can't please God. 
For he that comes to God must, okay, must believe. Yeah? Oh, well, I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, the problem's too big. It's too great. I'm going to carry on in this worry. I'm going to keep trembling like a tree. Or do I stop and say, okay, God, you've got this. I will believe. It's an act of the will. So this is what the scriptures say. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So you can't please him without putting faith in him. For he that comes to God must, an act of your will, believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Are you diligently seeking him? We heard that last week. Seek the Lord while he's near. Call upon him. For he will reward you. He will abundantly bless So that's an explanation for you this morning. Am I in faith? Am I being established in faith? It's an important challenge. We must believe. Believe means to confirm, support, and uphold. It is a basic trust and leads wholeheartedly on God. It is leaning on him in the dark with confidence of commitment and surrender. It's a surrender to the truth. Listen, trust God, be established. Trust his word, succeed. That's the word for you this morning. Succeed in him, be established. Now, verse 11. Isaiah goes on. He's prophesied to him. He spoke to him. He's given him the word. He's told him to believe. And then, I, I, I love God. He always wants to encourage us. This man was not a man of faith. He was a pagan, basically. He was worse than a pagan because he, he was in the line of fellowship of, of David. But he was choosing to go after Baal. He'd rejected the light. And yet God in his grace came to him to encourage faith. Okay? So he says to him, ask a sign. Ask of me. Either high or low. Whatever. Ask me and I'll do it. Now, it's not a good idea to start asking God uh, for signs. But here it is important. A, a, a commandment. A suggestion, a good idea. It was a commandment to Isaac to ask, and he needs a response. Eos was being given the opportunity to believe. God's word. He was giving him an encouragement to believe what God was saying to him because God's word is trustworthy and to encourage his faith. God is not asking for a leap of faith. God doesn't ask us to do that. Many people have said to me, oh... You've got faith, but I don't have that kind of faith in fairy tales and stories. But it's not. We're having a leap into the light, into the light of God's word and God's truth. That's what God wanted from this king. He wanted to encourage his faith to believe the truth. David's line. It's not usual for us to scripturally ask for sights. I don't do that. Unless I really am sure that God has spoken to me. And that I'm sure that I've been exercised by his spirit and the promptings and the continual promptings. I will say, Lord, speak to me by this. Just to encourage what I'm already believing and receiving. That is different. An adulterous and unbelieving generation keep asking for a sign. Oh, if you're the son of God, jump off that. Prove it to us. Prove it to us all the time. They just fed the 5,000. Prove it to us. An unbelieving and adulterous generation keep asking God to prove himself. That isn't faith. That is actually unbelief. If we keep asking God in an unsurance, oh, show me, if you give me a sign there, I'll believe, I'll believe. We need to believe and stand and be established in faith first of all. And then we'll trust God and move forward. Yet there's signs given. When Noah came out of the ark and the human race was coming out of the ark, there was the rainbow. What is that a sign of? God's grace. It's a reminder, it's a token. We take the communion this morning, they remind us, the tokens of Jesus' love for us and his grace. So they're signs, tokens, but we're not to ask for them. We, we are called, well, I've got here. Right, for, oh yeah, uh, sorry, um, I'm going to carry it away. Um, Ahaz, because he was of the line of David, was given a chance to affirm the divine covenant, to get back to his roots, to get back to his faith. And he was made a chance to turn away from the coalition that he was going into with these false kings. 
Now, let me just say something on that. Uh, Jehoshaphat got himself into coalitions. The Bible says not to be unequally yoked, okay, in partnership with the enemy. And so he was partnershiping with the enemy kings. He was making a coalition to try and save Israel. And he was actually turning away from God. And so he was trying to find the help in Assyria to come and fight the battle. So he stripped the temple of all its gold and sent the money to him. And in fact, he rejected God and chose to the arm of flesh, the arm of man. And it didn't work. He rejected the word of the Lord. He had the chance to come back. So it says in verse 11, I will not put the Lord to the test. So when Isaiah asked him to first ask God for a sign to encourage your faith that God will do this, he said, I will not ask the Lord for a sign. What was he doing? Was he being humble or was he just showing his unbelief? He was rejecting. Friends, we can reject when God asks us to affirm our faith, when he asks us and tests us and tries us. We can reject in unbelief the prophetic promise. This was a smokescreen for Ahaz's unbelief. God is going to do it anyway. Evidence cannot create faith, friends, this morning. How many times have I heard that? Evidence that's before you, scriptural evidence, prophetic evidence, doesn't create faith. Okay? You believe that when you choose to. Okay? Evidence is welcome. It's an insight, but we have to choose to believe and put our faith in it. God's word goes to work when we believe. It's the cash book, it's the checkbook. And when we act on it, it unlocks God's promises. Faith is encouraged and strengthened through difficulties, yes, as we face them. But finishing here, the wonderful promise that God says he's going to do. He's going to give this child in the future. And his name is going to be Emmanuel, God with us. Just say to us this morning that all the promises of God are yes and amen in Jesus. All the promises of God to us this morning are found in him. Whatever God is saying to Isaiah, through Isaiah to this man, he says to us through Christ. Emmanuel means God with us. And God has been with us as he walked on earth through Jesus. Jesus died on the cross, he rose again. He's ascended into heaven, he's alive now this morning. And he's changing and transforming lives because he is the power of God. He is the arm of God. He is the son of God. And he is with us supernaturally by his spirit. Even this morning we felt his presence. He is Emmanuel, God with us. And we can surely come and put our whole weight of belief and trust in him this morning. Have you trusted Jesus for salvation? Have you come to him in faith? Is your mind saying, well, oh, I don't know whether he's the son of God. He was a good man. He was a prophet. All this stuff. Or can you say this morning in true faith from what the scripture says, Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Can you say this morning, I will accept Jesus as both Lord, Master, and King. I will do that by an act of will of my faith. I will trust what God says in his word. I will believe his promise of salvation. That Jesus died on the cross for my sin, that he rose again and is alive now, and that he is coming again. Can you say that this morning? That's God's word to you. If you're listening on the internet, if you're looking for salvation... Look for it in Christ. Generally, he is the Emmanuel, God with us. Amen.